All right, welcome one and all to the amazing one of a kind PPC Unfiltered podcast with Michael Nadalin in Australia, market lead. He's over there somewhere. And uh, Corey Lindo from Ads by Corey. I am a solopreneur. I love what I do. We are both in the Google ads, Facebook ads space. Michael does a lot more Facebook ads than I certainly do. But you've come here looking for insights, news, and we got a lot of stuff for you today. Michael, how's things going, man? Mate, things are good. It is a Thursday morning, and I love Thursdays because it's closer to Friday. I've got a few <laughs> meetings today, a few new business clients, a few new business meetings. Uh, very excited for them. Life's going well, mate. How about you? Yeah. Dude, Thursday is Friday evening, right? Uh, uh, Friday Eve. Friday yeah. Eve. I mean, that is that. Yeah, the Friday <laughs> before that Friday. <laughs> Friday before yeah. Friday. He's like, no, things are good, man. It's been, uh, you know, it's a little hectic because it's November and yeah. I work predominantly with larger e-commerce uh, retailers. So, yeah, it's, it's a little crazy, a little hectic, a lot of last minute requests and that's expected. Uh, usually I go into November uh, knowing it's going to be a little more hectic than usual, but it's fun. We've had some incredible October results uh, for many of my clients, you know, some of the best months that we've had on record, which is insane in the e-commerce yeah. space. Usually October is just sort of like, yeah, let's just try to put that to the side and let's focus on November. Uh, but no, I've had some really phenomenal results. A lot of that due to some of the, the code that I've written, custom code to create some forecasting and say, hey, you know, what? let's build some confidence around putting additional spend during a month that you might not intuitively think we should be putting spend. Uh, and some of those insights have really driven uh, our strategy and we've seen amazing results from that. So, so yeah, things, things are looking up. Things are looking great. And November is doing really great for a lot of my clients so far. So I'm really excited for them. Wonderful hit to yeah. hear, mate. Now, that's a nice, humble brag. Nah, joking. That is a you little obviously... humble brag. <laughs> Well, the truth is, man, like you really excel in Google Ads around e-commerce and especially around peak seasons, um, either it's Black Friday or the client's peak seasons based on their data. So mm -hmm. it's no surprise you're seeing the best results because, mate, you're a bloody legend at it. I appreciate that. Oh, speaking of that, Michael, <laughs> we both just got uh, voted into the PPC survey top 100 influencers in the PPC space. Yeah. So how does that the feel? Second year in the road. For the second, second year, year <laughs> two time. How does it feel, man? Uh, you're, you're, you've been awarded into the top 100. How yeah. does it feel to be, to be recognized? Honestly, when I got the, uh, the message about it, I g genuinely shocked and I'm not a tub person because I'm like, I haven't been releasing content this year. I've done a few posts here and there. Obviously we do this podcast and people do yeah. see it. Uh, but there's nothing being that's just like exclusive Michael Nadlin or market lead. Just pure, like the truth is because I've been really busy, like been launching another company that's going very well. Market leads expanding with new team members and heaps of clients. Like a lot of times putting out content is part of an acquisition strategy, but I realized I don't need more clients. Like we're really busy. So when I did get that, uh, email i was like this is amazing because it's like it's just nice to be acknowledged for the work that you do the expertise you put out there yeah. and similar to a lot of the other amazing people that are out there like it's because they're putting content out there like they're it's the most influential people because they're putting content out there they're influencing the market the thought patterns the thinking so whilst there will be a lot of amazing people in the world who are like really good at the skill and the craft uh, you're not influencing anyone because you're not actually sharing that expertise with the world mm. or kind of being like a guiding light to help people. So it's just really nice to be acknowledged for that um, because I do take pride in the amazing work we do, the clients that we really impact and the content that you and I put out and what we put out because it's just like, I want everyone to win. Yeah, so we want to help that's people. How I feel. Yeah, that's already, I mean, you could say this is all self-promotion and everything, but honestly, I know you and I, when we started even just considering doing this podcast, whatever, a, a year ago plus, we really came at it was, we just really want to talk and catch up, but also yeah. record it and help some people. Like, I know it's easy to say, oh, this is just a marketing spiel, but honestly, we had so many leads and, and so much business we still do that, it's, you know, it's it wasn't an easy decision to get started with this whole brand, right? Yeah. Because we have been busy this whole time. It wasn't like we necessarily needed a bunch of new clients, but we did have this feeling, this need to help people out and give some of the advice that's been sort of sitting in our head this whole time. So yeah, yeah it's been a pleasure. It is fantastic to be recognized. 
yet again. I was also kind of surprised for the same reason. I have not been great about putting out content this year. I'm fully honest about that. And honestly, my clients know this. Things have just been crazy busy for me yeah. too. I mean, I've been building out tons of custom code, trying to build my own applications for PPC. Hopefully I can get that out to the world within the next year or so. It's a ton of work, guys, uh, yeah. to do that type of stuff. Also trying to improve my own skills in the data analysis, data science side, so that I can unleash on the world all of these things. But I want to be ready for that. I don't want to just have some half-baked ideas and thoughts around it. I want you guys to get the absolute best material uh, and, and it be fully processed and something that can be clean for you. It's not going to be perfect, but it needs to be uh, accurate. So that's what I'm, I'm working on for you guys. So I know it has not been the most content rich year for Corey Lindo, but I will say expect a lot more next year. And uh, yeah, I was, I was equally shocked and very humbled by, uh, by the, uh, the rating there. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. And I've got to acknowledge that for you, man. Like I, the reason why I wanted to do this podcast with you originally was because I was like, we did a few interviews on my channel, but it was because I saw you on the Solutions 8 channel and because I saw some of your posts, I'm like, this dude is damn smart. And I'm like, <laughs> for my own selfish reasons, it's like, how do I figure out how to become friends with him <laughs> so then I get to absorb all that beautiful nectar from your brain? And <laughs> the reality is it's like I've recognized there's been a lot of amazing people I've become friends with in my life who I've had that mentality with, but it's it goes both ways. Like, you know, yeah. I wanted to learn from you. I wanted to be friends with you. Like, dude, we laugh all the time. All the time. Like, yeah. I just know that every time we get on this call at 8 a.m. or 7 a.m., whatever the daylight savings, I'm like, there's going to be a lot of laughing before we get on. And then <laughs> we call this the PBC Unfiltered Podcast because, honestly, this is not a polished show. It's just like us coming in with a few ideas and just talking. Like, we, there's no script. There is mm. no, like... Um, we're like, oh, a week before, hey, we've got to like present ourselves like this. Like, this is yeah. us. This is how I speak to clients. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm probably more raw with clients, but <laughs> it's really good that, you know, even just after this time, we can still be acknowledged because it's like a lot of people do not like unfiltered stuff. They want the idea of it, but they don't actually want it because it challenges them to actually change, which most people don't mm. want to do. Really interesting point. Love that. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you bringing the topic up uh, for us to talk about because, you know, I, it's easy to just be kind of be like, OK, cool. I appreciate it and kind of just move on and, and refocus into what you're doing. But sometimes you got to take a step back and just hold on and take a pause, pat yourself on the back and move yeah. forward. So, you know, that was a bit of a humble back. Double pat on the back. <laughs> Even That's better. Good. So, look, guys, the, the main reason we're saying this is because we want you to vote for us. We don't really care about you. <laughs> we just want those damn votes. No, no. Look, we're going to put out more content. That's what we do. But it would be awesome if you voted for us because, yes. you know, if you're watching this and you're getting any value at all just to help you, this would help us a lot. God bless yes, you. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. So okay, cool. do we want to move from that into our humble brag moment? You yes. said you had something ready for this? Yes, All right. yes, yes. So okay. fam of the PBC Unfiltered Universe. Uh, we've been talking about this for a while, but you know, a lot of people online are kind of talking about the results and how good they are. So we're going to create a new segment called Humble Brag, where it's we're bragging, but it's more from the humble perspective because we are so humble. But the, the main thing here is actually to share some of the results we've got for clients because every week there's always outstanding results and the next part to it is like what was the strategy or what were some of the ideas or what were some of the insights we had from it because I know what I've recognized and I'll saying this to my team um, the best things I've ever learned from advertising have come from number one my direct experience but number two seeing someone's loom video or them talking about their results and some insights and actions because if you go with your own experience you actually get the direct experience you learn it but sometimes that road you're walking down you actually miss out on things because you're just like you're only going down your own path there's another path there and there have been so many times when someone's just offhandedly said something with the strategy and i'm like wow that sounds amazing i implement it and i've been using it for a decade now so what this is about is the humble brag is to inspire inspiration uh, or bring up inspiration, but also just talk about some of the strategies that help us get to those results mm -hmm. as well. So awesome. That's that. Okay, humble brag. Here we go. Here we go. So, as only Corey and I were chatting about this a few moments ago, I've only just brought up one client um, in my mind. I'm not going to bring up the data. Like it's just going to be too hard to like filter out yeah. the data. 
Yeah. So um, we have many clients that have gone really well recently. So there's going to be a lot of content um, coming out. So around January, I got a lead from a, ref- like a referral lead from a client who's been going, actually, Corey referred this person to me and then they became a client um, and then they had one of their best mates or mates um, referred to me like two years later. Um, that that person you've Corey referred me to still works with us and uh, they have a company they were going really, really, really well and then their website just got hacked. Their SEO rankings literally dropped. They were making millions a month and then, and this is lead generation. So it's a service-based business and literally like, burning cash now like so they came to us because the person who was running the google ads was also this person doing the seo so they were just realizing that this person wasn't able to deliver the outcomes anymore and actually was the cause of the problem as well anyway they came to us with um their account they're probably spending about 20 to 30 grand a month they're up to about 60 grand a month now um and they've got a very tight KPI to hit like $12 cost per leads, like actual good quality leads as well. When they came to us, they were about $18. So probably about 50% higher than the benchmark. And also the lead volume was low and the conversion rate was like, and this is the crazy thing. Their conversion rate was already at like 18%. So I needed to get that cost per lead from $18 down to about $13 or $12 and to get the conversion rate higher. The results so far, as in six months later, the average cost per lead is about $13 now. The average conversion rate to a website, not a landing page, a website where people filling out a like a 12 um, or maybe about like 15 things in a form, it's about a 30% conversion rate. And we've been able to reduce the cost per click by 40% in a com- an industry that's getting more competitive. So... And, and real quick, that means you brought the the CPA, the cost per lead down 28%. Does I hear you correctly? Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably about, yeah, 28 to 32 percent ish. It ranges. It does range. But yes. So That's big. look, and these are those things that over time I'm starting to realize I usually don't like to take on like clients who have been with heaps of agencies and are super optimized because I'm like, if I put the same effort into them, I might only get a 1% gain versus another client who's like got a really bad account, which I could get like a 400 or 10 X return for the same effort. So I took this on because it was a referral and the, the owner is like, he's a really good friend of mine now, like really good friend. And that's kind of what suckers me in like in business, I'll take clients on cause I'm like impressed by the business owner and I want to be friends with them. Uh, so what do we do? So, the this is really the strategy and a lot of this may sound basic but it really comes back to fundamentals we were from the start i was like we need to strip everything back i need you to get your developers to like empirically and scientifically prove that the conversion tracking is set up properly that's number one so like making sure like literally redoing all the codes on the website stripping codes off the website using google tag manager so it was verified like tracking was vital for a client that was bleeding money that is always number one like you need to make sure you're tracking because if your tracking's off by one two five ten percent you can't make those big swings and get back to where you were so that was number one i know it sounds so basic <laughs> but Corey, i've we've taken on a few bigger clients recently it's always an issue so it's not like it's more like the the bigger their account the more likelihood there's the tracking is an issue and it's not because their websites are so advanced it's just like People in house just get complacent as fuck. <laughs> so that's yeah. number one. Uh, number two, we did a full account restructure. Um, I think that's probably the number one thing I do all the time with new clients. I, t- I restructure their account. I keep their old campaigns going or we keep their old campaigns going, but then we create new campaigns that we run side by side and start to transition the old ones out because the old ones will have a lot of data to it. We'll be getting the lead volume whilst our new structure, we can start building up over time. So for this client, because they are a national um, account, rather than just having one campaign for the whole country, we had new campaigns for every location because location was really important, which gave us the ability to do multiple things. Number one, budget allocation towards certain cities and states. Number two, on a high level, it's really easy to see what the results were, being at conversion rates, cost per lead, um, competitive metrics in press and share. Like a big thing a lot of companies have is 
they have a big account, it's getting good results, but they actually don't have that granular insight towards where it's going well, what keywords are going well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then number three, what we did was, and this is really simplifying it, was um, I worked with their development team to, they had their offline leads and yes, we've got conversions in the account, but I needed them to actually give me the offline data to put into a spreadsheet. So they set up a Zapier where every lead that came through, it would update if they've quoted them or turned into a sale, what the quote value was, what the sale value was. So then I could do my psychotic spreadsheets and go, okay, you've spent this much this month or like this much in this month or this location. This is how many leads you got in platform, conversion rate, blah, blah, blah. And then I started doing offline. This is how many quotes you've done, your lead to quote rate, your quote to sale rate, your sales, your sales, like all of that. So then they could see in one dashboard really clearly what specific campaigns, keywords, months were actually equating to revenue and profit. And that was the thing that allowed us to loop back into the account So then we could go, okay, these keywords and these locations, whilst the cost per lead may be high or low, actually equate to sales. So the humble brag here is, or not the the insight is, you can't just rely on the ad account as you get it, the tracking as you get it, the structure as you get it, or even the offline data as you get it. You've got to lead the charge. And when you do, you can literally transform businesses. Absolutely. Man. There we go, man. They're very lucky. So that's a, that is a definitely a, a top tier humble brag there. <laughs> I would just say yeah. like I've years ago, I used to do this thing where I just write down all the skills I want to master. So about in 2017, I'm like, I want to be a master of Google ads, Facebook ads, Google analytics, um, sales and Google she- like Excel and Google sheets. And then I kind of just like, you know, life went on. And then I start to realize, Hey, I'm actually am really good at that. It's like extraordinary at but this stuff with the avatars, like, and I know you would agree, Corey, it's mostly data analysis. But then what mm-hmm. is data analysis on a practical skill? It's really just like for me, it's a Google sheet with a lot of data in it, some ifs, count ifs, pulling it into a really simple dashboard that I or a um, someone, a business owner or a general manager can look at. I genuinely think that the biggest skill lacking is people's ability to use Google Sheets because it's the most simple, easy and like flexible data analysis tool for just like beginners to advanced people. Mm. So I just wanted to add that in for an insight. Master sheets, because then it will allow you to move to other things that like Corey does. <laughs> is that, is that uh, the, okay, now you go with your humble brag. <laughs> yeah, now, now you go, now you say stuff. That's all I'm, I'm like, where am I going with this? That's it, <laughs> All right, well, as Michael alluded to, I'm, I'm big data, data science nerd guy. So I like to run Python code, uh, over JavaScript, like Google ad scripts, things like that. So this is a really deep, deep step. But I also work with clients who have a lot of data. I also work with clients who don't have as much data. We can still usually find insights through extrapolation, et cetera. But I didn't have anything prepared. So this is really off the cuff. Uh, Michael's putting me on the spot here. Wait, but wait, no, uh, no, no, no. You don't, you don't have to, we could do your humble brag next week. Oh, I'm ready. It's all good. Okay, I was just okay, going to say, good. it's just not going to be a long winded thing. That's okay. all, which is probably good for the listeners. I'm like, yeah, 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 move on to the other stuff. But I'll give you some insights as to how we kind of got there. Now, I think with anything, guys, there's always going to be a mix, uh, mix of reasons when things go really well as to what attributed to that, right? So product development, marketplace shifts, competition, inventory, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. There's always going to be a lot of variables, uh, but I'd say the one that's really top of mind for me because I just reported on it what well, yesterday, day before, uh, we had uh, new customer revenue attributed directly to Google Ads through a machine learning attribution tool. Uh, that new customer revenue was up 99. percent I know I could just say 100, but you know I'm a data guy. I want to be really yeah. specific. 99 percent year over year with only 19 percent higher spend. That's insane. Wow. Right. So pause for effect. It's literally new customer revenue, not returning, not just overall new customer revenue, 99 percent up year over year in October for an online retailer. Wow. <laughs> October is usually terrible. It ended up being uh, both with and without daily outliers considered one of our best new customer revenue months on record. Actually, it was our highest new customer revenue month that we've had, ever had on record. And guys, we're not talking like. 10,000 a month here. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars in new customer revenue. Again, I work with larger clients. So when I say like these percentages, it's not, you know, 1,000 to $2,000. This is big money for these guys. They're able to now start to 
you know, expecting very large Novembers and even the beginnings of the year because of some of the forecasts. So let me tell you how we got there, right? So it was a mix of things. And this is what you get when you work with someone that doesn't just look at the raw numbers of Google ads and focuses on that solely. They're asking you questions about your business, your objectives, and they already know Google ads so well, like the back of their hand, they can translate those objectives and those goals into strategies and tactics um, inside of your accounts. And that's, that's what we did, right? So biggest, I think levers is going to sound like a big ass list here. Sorry, I put the cursing, uh, YouTube, <laughs> it's a big list, but essentially a, a lot of things played into this. I'd say on one, one hand, we did take a huge risk and overhaul our inventory. We essentially went from a sort of 1.0 that we've had for a while to a 2.0, uh, completely moved away from the 1.0. Again, that was a huge risk, um, completely, uh, moving up in terms of product development. And that's always going to be core guys for e-commerce businesses, that product development. Sometimes it's going to hit, sometimes it's going to miss. In our yeah. case, we took most of our main products and completely converted them to a newer model. That's uh, we're not Apple. Like we're, that's a, that's a big risk for yeah, us wow. and discontinue the other ones. That certainly helped a lot in terms of conversion rates as well as marketplace comp uh, competitiveness. Uh, so that certainly played a part. Um, we decided in uh, October that we were going to spend a lot more than we have in the past. And I mentioned year over year is only, you know, only at 19%. But again, guys, I work with really large spend. So 19% is actually quite a lot of money uh, relative to other Google advertising accounts out there. And uh, again, getting 99% year over year increase in new customer revenue. Most of that was the restructure that we did as well as additional spend and product development. If I had to just put those three bullet points there, we spent in the right areas. And that's because I was able to do my own nerdy data science stuff, create custom code, build forecasts, present that in an actionable way to the stakeholders to say, guys, I think I have high confidence here using statistical testing, using custom models that I built that I have stress tested like crazy to say, I think if we were to spend X amount more, this is probably the returns we're going to get. This is the revenue we can expect, especially considering all these changes in the marketplace between October and November of 2024. I think if we were to go ahead and take the risk, spend a little bit more than we usually do in October, we can get a huge amount more in terms of returns. And that's what we've seen so far. So some of that was just the custom code, being able to give the stakeholders confidence in spending additionally on this type of channel. Uh, as well as uh, doing some custom code to figure out where we needed to um, place products inside of Google's e e ecosystem in terms of campaign segmentation. Essentially, uh, for all you data nerds out there, it's kind of just like custom uh, k-means clustering. So you create a your custom machine learning model that determines these types of products uh, should be bundled together. They perform similarly. These type uh, should these type of products tend to be over here, essentially just creating groupings of products. Yeah. And then you can feed that into Google with your own tactics and given these settings that we have to work within within Google to then allow the machine learning to say, oh, I don't have to try so hard to figure out, you know, how much I should spend on these types of products versus these. You've already communicated that to me via segmentation, campaigns, asset groups, ad groups, et cetera. Now I can just rock and roll right away and we have better control over spend and bidding strategies. So I think those were some of the core uh, factors there. And yeah, three month moving average for Google ads continues to rise. So this isn't just a recent thing. Things have been going up for us uh, over the last, uh, I mean, I've been working with them for a few years, but this year has been quite incredible for us. So that is it. That is my humble brag. And hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Obviously, you're gonna have to do a lot more research and what the heck I'm even talking about with yeah. K means and all that. I get it's confusing. But that think of that as, a, as something you can try to strive for, right? Like, hey, that sounds interesting. Yeah. Chat GPT, Google, try to figure out how to do that stuff yourself. And you can eventually get some of the same results. Mate, I think I'm going to ask you, I don't even care about the audience right now, mate. Can you record me a Loom video of you just doing this stuff once and just like, I just want to see it. I just want to see the- 12 uh, hours of me coding, that's not going to happen. I'm so curious about even just some of the outputs. Um, sure, just like, yeah. yeah I, you know, we can keep it behind the scenes and then we could be like some Illuminati of like spreadsheets because I think, yeah, there's definitely, mate, you're getting me all like, all um, hot and heated, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> I love this stuff. Uh, the, the, the reason I love it is because this is the bridge between business and advertising, where a lot of people are just either advertising or a lot of people are just like mm -hmm. hashtag business consultants. And these yeah. people are 
good at the craft, but they're too much focused on the craft and they just like, they, if you're too focused on the craft, you're actually not going to be as effective versus the business consultant person. Like they just give generic business advice that even this person could give the data analysis side is the bridge between them, between the uh, intelligence of the business, the intelligence being the data, the insights, the focus areas, and then the advertising, if it needs to be bridged as well. But as you've probably noticed as well, mate, like you're paid for Google ads in the data analysis, you're probably giving insights on their other channels like Facebook or organic or their email marketing. Because the reality is it's a holistic thing. Once you do the data analysis, you start to realize you start to see the full, you see the full valley. Like you actually see everything. It's not just like I'm doing this for Google ads and that's it. You start to go, I can see everything. And you start to see more than their SEO or their Facebook specialists or even their internal like team members who are like are supposed to know this data as well because you can do it on a, such an advanced level or even on the most simplistic level, you can just use this stuff and it can make all the difference in the world. <laughs> Funny enough, Michael, <laughs> you say that their Facebook, uh, they said this during the call, a reporting call. They said, uh, the, yeah, our, our, adver- our Facebook advertising agency, they, uh, they just told us, uh, Hey, whoever's doing your Google ads, you need to pay him more money. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> so yeah, nice. absolutely. Nice, mate. Yeah. Guys, omni-channel, you gotta be paying attention to yeah. everything. Some, some businesses, it's not going to work well in terms of social media, advertising, whatever, uh, you know, beyond remarketing, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta love that kind of stuff. That it's always highly appreciated. And I love that, you know, we're not agencies competing. We're trying to help each other, uh, cohesively to help the business. It's not just about yeah. us and trying to make more money. Like we obviously want to help these businesses as well, or you wouldn't be motivated to get these types of results. Definitely. And the the reality is like when you have good partnerships with other agencies that you don't do the work they do, they refer you work because then if you can help give them some insights, it actually helps them do better work, which actually takes that pressure off them. Especially if you're like, one thing I've noticed with us is this happens so much they have multiple agencies and they're like, can you start doing all this stuff for us? Because we like how you do strategy and communicating the reporting. And we're like, eh, we don't really do that. So no, but it, it really goes to show that if you start moving to this higher level of data analysis and business consulting to data analysis, that's what clients actually need at the end of the day. Like they can hire someone on Upwork just to do the ads. They really can, but they, are they going to get the same results? Definitely not. But the difference between someone who's amazing at ads and someone who delivers the results like Corey or myself or my team does is that it's the data analysis side. Like there's, there's no like, Hey Corey, have you done this thing in performance max? This unlocks 50% growth. It's like, it's not that that's not that it's done in spreadsheets. It's done on the computer outside the interface. Yeah. Yep. I couldn't agree. I know there's going to be those creative agencies, like creative prominent uh, agencies are like, nah, it's the creative that'll really move the needle. And I'm not going to argue with you guys. I mean, I don't, I don't agree with that. I think it really depends on the advertising channel. Like you could maybe argue that creative is in the messaging is the most important part of uh, performance and growth. But even then you still got to do the analysis to figure out what's working, what's not, what should be invested in more and what should be invested in less. So you're still going to have to have both. And I, and with that, Corey, that even I, I agree, um, creative is so important and Mm -hmm. you, you only know what creative works based on the data. And so many people just like go into ad accounts or go into something and then they just look and they're not even a data analysis. They're like, Oh, this one goes well. And they might just see a few ads and then they just go with their gut feeling rather than like, how about you just export all the data from the last 30, 60, 90 days, whatever into a spreadsheet and just actually create a few like some if table, like some ifs and tables to actually see what the data actually says, like go move, stop, move. People have their own bias as to what they think is going well Yeah. versus when you actually do data analysis, you can actually just get what is going well and not going well, not based on your own bias, just based on the data. And sometimes you're just shocked. You're like, oh, I thought this was going to go so well. Like I thought it was an amazing idea. And then you're so let down. You're like, but the data is there. The results are there. Obviously, there's always biases based on how you set things up, yeah. you know, time frame, if there's under offers, competing campaigns. But Sometimes just data analysis humbles you to go, eh, I thought it was a sick idea. I thought I was smart, but it didn't work. <laughs> That's one of my favorite things about statistics. And, I, I, you know, it's really the, the secret sauce of uh, being confident about the decisions that you're making and the insights that you're seeing. And, and then obviously how actionable those things are and, and et cetera. And I've always, I've always reminded consulting clients how important that is people want to learn these skills. You know, the statistics end cannot be 
forsaken, right? It's not to be yeah. dramatic, but it is so vital to not just say, hey, I think this is good enough. Now, there's some where you have to kind of mold those two, like, hey, from a practical business standpoint, you know, we can't wait for 95% confidence, right? Like, yeah. we just need to move. And that's understandable. But to be able to utilize uh, statistics and statistical modeling as sort of insurance to feel like, hey, you know what? We're not 100% confident in this. Nothing really ever is in terms of predictions or whatever. But we do feel like this is a very good indication of where things are going in terms of movement. Or sometimes, like to your point, I look at it and I was like, man, I was really thinking this campaign, if we were to feed it more spend, we're going to get more revenue. And yeah. we find certain, and we do certain analysis and find, no, actually, there's a clear point of diminishing returns with a, a very high level of statistical confidence there. And just is what it is, you know, we, yeah. we, we're gonna have to change things in order to see if we can push that boundary. But yeah, reality sometimes can be harsh, yeah. but also it's just good to, to learn those things. So don't sleep on learning some statistical analysis uh, it is very important if you want to get to a high, higher level with this stuff. And just so that you feel like you're doing everything you possibly can to serve the clients. Yeah. And on the last note for me, it's just like, it just gives you this level of confidence that when you're on client calls and someone might be throwing some left, like, like curveball at you're like nah the data says this but yeah, but this is yeah I, I agree that sounds like an amazing idea and the data does say this though so we can try that but just, well, you know these are our benchmarks these are our numbers when we've done that in the past so i'm happy to execute that based on your idea but this is the data we're working from or when people are like yep. the results are not good in the business well google ads is going well like these were your benchmarks we're exceeding it so what other parts of your businesses are right. not going well because it's so easy to start taking on all the stress and the responsibility of a business that is not yours when you don't know the data because then you're like, oh, it must be me. Because so many people yep. go, oh, I must not be a good enough job. I just yep. go now, I'm like, I know the data. This is the data. Tell me where this data looks bad and I'll improve it. But tell me what's bad in your business and we'll see if this is related or not. It makes a huge difference. 100%. I, I'm going to just end it with, because because I know we're already going <laughs> and then long I'm winded here. And then you're going <laughs> to end then, it. Yeah, yeah. We're going to just keep going back and forth for another hour. <laughs> but it, I, I feel like this happens all the time with businesses that, again, they don't have these strong uh, statistical backgrounds or data analysis background, whatever you want to call it. They can't really look at the data and fully understand it. So they just do, they have these very narrow ways of analyzing the data. Like, all right, last seven days or last 30 days compared to the previous period and uh, versus and then month over month or just year over year, they're not looking at trends over time. Uh, yep. They're not able to model those things and they don't really understand any of that stuff. It sounds too complicated, but if you don't know those things, what you're looking at, it can be very, very deceiving. Uh, so you should trust in someone that knows what they're doing uh, that can help you kind of understand it and, and give you actionable insights. So, uh, so yeah, that's another little humble brag. And that is uh, me, not Corey. <laughs> No, <laughs> clearly <laughs> Excellent. all right well that was a cool. ripper segment i hope we didn't lose many people there i think once again guys it's really important understand data analysis because yeah. this is the future like your, your ad skills are going to go somewhere else your business consulting and data analysis is the way the money is yeah that's what couldn't agree more awesome cool all right should we wrap up with some news nice mate i reckon that sounds okay. like a wonderful idea i have no <laughs> news even though i look okay. for some so i'll let you <laughs> rock some sweet ass news <laughs> no there's honestly it's since the last time we talked we, we dropped a lot of uh, big news uh, last time so i don't have a bunch of really really recent stuff but i did think it was important to cover a couple of things that we didn't uh over the last few weeks in terms of like october end of september news so let me just pull up some of my notes here. So one thing in particular is going to be Google Ads search competition has increased in particular from pressures from TikTok and perplexity, which Michael really likes to use. It's mm, his go-to AI. Is that still the case, Michael? You still like no, perplexity? No, I, I use ChatGPT as an AI, but I have perplexity bookmark. I find perplexity is a bit more human and actually yeah, references okay. things. But yeah, anyway, awesome. let's knock on the side. So, that's, so this is what's interesting, right? So you are actually starting to see Google Ads for like the first time ever have real competition uh, in terms of the search competition, right? So I know Microsoft has always been out there. Uh, you know, no, no offense, no shade being thrown on Microsoft, yeah. but we all know that no it's a very specific niche <laughs> <laughs> demographic and a very small part of the market that's using that consistently. Most of the people that have Edge browsers pre-installed in their Microsoft computers and they're just using the default. Yeah. You can kind of take a guess at who's usually doing that. But, you know, some people like Edge, I, I guess. I couldn't imagine why. But regardless, uh, there has been increased to competition for Google Ads in the search market from particularly TikTok and perplexity. So that is very interesting. So it's a good reminder as far as a practical takeaway. 
don't forget to diversify your marketing. Don't just focus only on one channel. There's these people, your demographics are probably looking around at different places. Maybe they're spending a majority of time on one type of thing versus another. You don't want to just spend only on one particular area. You've got to be diversifying your marketing nowadays. It's, it's a more modern strategy and usually the more intelligent strategy. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, moving on, uh, Pmax assets, right? So um, we now have, I actually like this uh, this feature, Michael. Usually I'm just kind of like, eh, new feature. Okay, cool. Am I going to use it? Probably not. But in this case, I actually kind of like this one. It is shareable previews. So when you have a, an asset or something that Google automatically created and you want to share that with the client just to get their thoughts, do we want to use this? Eh, yay or nay? There is a, a, you can actually just share the preview very easily right from the browser. Kind of like that right. one. It's a nice little neat feature. I haven't seen that. Yep. Is it, is it, it rolled out with everyone? Uh, I believe not. Usually everything starts in the U.S. market. Sorry, Australians yeah. and everybody else. <laughs> it's usually U.S. to be tested and then moved on. So I'm not quite sure as yeah. far as what markets it's on right now. But shareable previews, uh, you can now, uh, Pmax will also automatically make certain, um, certain conversions to the video, like they can shorten the videos. I have mixed feelings about that. Uh, they can flip profiles for vertical versus horizontal without you having to do that. So this is great for those businesses that have very limited resources mm. for asset design. You know, they, they don't know Photoshop or, you know, InDesign or, InDesign or any of those things. They, they just don't really know and they don't have the time or the resource to pay somebody to do it. Hey, Google can now provide some of those things automatically uh, and you have those creation tools at your disposal. Yeah. Uh, so something to keep in mind for people. Um, and you can review all these things in the asset reporting section. I was curious, like, where do you find this stuff? And just if you're wondering where, it's in the asset reporting section of your Google Ads interface. Wonderful. Okay. Cool. Last two things, because we are really running out of time here. So uh, Google Maps has had its biggest up update in terms of AI, and I think they said 20 or 30 years or something like that. So essentially, now you can ask Google Maps questions, and it can provide results accordingly. Now, Michael, I'm sure you got the wheels spinning on that one in terms of local businesses, right? If you're a dentist mm -hmm. or something, uh, you're going to start getting generative answers in Google Maps, right? So you're going to have you know, what can I, things to do with friends this weekend? And you're going to get results for that. Are like, you know, best, best dentist that does, you know, crowns or something like that, right? Because now you're also going to be getting review summaries from Google's AI. Now, wow. that is really important because if you have a Google My Business profile, you definitely should. That'd be my recommendation. You're going to want to double check those reviews in there and also check what Google is spitting out for AI generated review summaries you may or may not be happy with what you see. Maybe that's just reality, but it's very important to stay on top of these things and to make sure that you're seeing what your customers or potential customers uh, are going to see as well. Nice. Okay. And then the last thing is just going to be in the Google Shopping Network. This is just the U.S. right now. Uh, we are getting AI briefs. So this is essentially Google is giving you the most important things to know before you buy. This is where, again, feed optimization is so, so vital to make sure you're showing up for relevant searches. Um, Google is essentially going to say, you know, we recommend these products and these products we actually don't think are a good fit based on your search. So, again, mm -hmm. Google, uh, Michael, you can imagine that like this is so key to optimize or else you could end up being bucketed into the not a good fit. And then all of a sudden people are just like, oh, okay, I'm not going to consider them anymore. That's that's a disaster. So you've got to be optimizing. It's becoming uh, more crucial than ever. Wonderful. Dude, I just found another article that's probably quite important on the Google Ads news front. So I don't know if you've seen this, but Google Ads Editor 2.8 is out. I think that was just released a few days ago. Anything interesting? Uh, well, a few things. New features including AI-generated images, export mm -hmm. to Google Sheets, like not CSV files, brand guidelines, image cropping, strict age and gender targeting, and a new help center and more. So looks like there's actually like a lot of new things coming out in Google 2.8. AI-generated images, export to Google Sheets, resizable image uh, airplane, pain, brand guidelines, image cropping, additional video enhancements, third-party measurement in Performance Max and Demand Gen. Video enhancements for demand gen allow final URL suffix in ACE campaigns. AC, what the hell that is? Oh, app campaigns. Yeah. App campaigns for engagement. 
inventory controls for VVC campaigns, which VVC is cost per view bidding tab campaigns. But anyway, that's interesting. I always like when Google Ads Editor has an update because I just yeah. feel like it actually, it's always behind what the interface is doing, but the editor is just like God mode when you're like. Yeah, it's a more it's robust like, option, yeah. yeah. You know, when you Absolutely. used to play like, um, did you ever play like Doom or like Quake or anything like that? Of course. And you put like no clip in and then you can like walk through the walls and stuff. I feel <laughs> yeah. like that's what this is. It's just like, <laughs> you just get into this like no clip mode and you're just constantly able just to do everything in like five minutes that would take you like, 50 minutes in the ad account as well yeah exactly that is google ads editor absolutely yeah. it's it's a way faster way of doing bulk changes and yeah. things like that um actually there was one really quick thing i want to mention though it's not a quick thing but i'm going to try to do it very quickly so essentially um shoot where are my notes on this um so essentially sorry guys i couldn't find my notes on this uh, i was going to maybe do it this week or the next one but essentially we're going to have access uh, this is google ads manager accounts right so mccs as we like to call them the agency world so if you have an agency level google ads account you're going to now get access if you pay for it to curated inventory packages this is pretty interesting mm -hmm. so essentially you're going to be able to pay uh, agencies can now connect with partners how they put it like connect with partners to explore and utilize what was it i think it was like pre-selected groups of ad spaces uh especially okay so essentially in a nutshell layman's terms you're going to be able to buy curated uh display placements and that's how i'm understanding it so far that are yeah. tailored to your specific needs so it'll be pretty interesting to see what that uh, leads to for most agencies especially those with limited data yeah interesting stuff corey okay, yes mate. sir well, look at the time i reckon it's time for us to yes, wrap up this, this circus <laughs> because it's been a wild <laughs> ride today. Yes. Corey, how can people find you, mate? Yeah, adsbycorey.com. Uh, check me out there and message me if you're interested in uh, working together, consulting, management, et cetera. Also on LinkedIn on a fairly regular basis, though I got to get better at that. So LinkedIn, you can find me there. Twitter every once in a while, YouTube every once in a while. And of course, the PPC Unfiltered podcast on YouTube and Spotify. Michael? Wonderful, mate. Uh, you can find me at Michael Nadalon on LinkedIn, the PPC Unfiltered podcast, marketlead.com.au and marketlead on YouTube as well. So thank you. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed today's episode. It was a bit more of a, you know, different one because we're talking more deeper about the data analytics and all those types of things. But this is the important stuff, especially as uh, the AI world's happening and the world is progressing. So we hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you soon. And don't forget to vote on ppcsurvey.com. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.